All right, many times with Legos, we want to make a program or a loop execute for a certain amount of time. So let's say five seconds. How do we do that? Well, I've got a loop here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and set up so this loop executes for exactly five seconds. So I'm, the way I'm going to do that is with a, a timer. So I'm going to grab a sensor, which sounds a little strange, but along with touch and sound and light, there is a timer. And so now I can actually read the timer. Now it turns out that the NXT has three timers built in, so I can create a constant here. And you can see there are three timers, one, two, or three. And so I can time, for example, three different loops independently, as an example. All right, so now the output of the timer is in milliseconds. So what I want to do is I want to compare that value. Say, is it greater than or equal to? Is it greater than or equal to? If I want to go for five seconds, because it's a uh, millisecond timer, it'd be, it'd be 5,000. So 5,000 milliseconds is five seconds. Now, of course, if let's say we're two seconds into it. So two seconds would be 2,000. Is 2,000 greater than 5,000? The answer would be no. And so what I want to do is put this in the loop condition. Of course, loop condition is basically saying stop if true. So it only stops if the timer is actually greater than or equal to 5,000, which achieves what we want. This loop will continue going until the timer exceeds or is equal to 5,000, which is five seconds. Now I'm going to go ahead and put in here another um, uh, function just so we can see what the results are. So I'm going to go in here and put this in five. Now we're pretty much ready to go except for one thing. The question is, when does that timer actually get started? So is it when the program first starts running or what? I'm not quite sure, so I'm going to go and make sure I know when that timer is set by, by going here and saying reset timer. I'm going to drag this in here, tunnel through, and now I can say, okay, now I know exactly when timer one is getting started. It's getting started right here. And the next thing it does is execute this loop. So I'm pretty sure that the, dis that the time between these two functions where, where I reset the timer and when I, when I read the timer is just a millisecond or two because it doesn't take very long to execute. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and deploy this. I'll bring my NXT over here, the, the remote display, so we can see it. I'm going to run it, and it'll go pretty fast. Two, one second, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, four, five seconds there, right? And so I'll run it again just to see. You can see it's counting away. And of course, the, the actually display on my NXT is quite a bit faster refresh rate. This is just because I'm connected to the computer here. But you see it runs for exactly five seconds. Pretty close. We got a millisecond or two here to execute this one, and then the loop's got a little bit overhead. But it's pretty much, for all intents and purposes, five seconds. And that's the way you'd set it up. So we... To, to, to run it in a regular program, this is all you need, and you'd have the loop but it contain the rest of your code that you were, that you were trying to execute for that given amount of time, and you'd set the time here. And that's the way it'd work. Okay, the next logical question would be, what if I have more than one loop that I want to control? So what if I'm doing more than one thing? Well, I've got that basic program, a little bit of modification, basic same thing I did a second ago. I'm going to cut, or copy, sorry, and paste, and so now I've got two loops. And you control B to get rid of the bad wires. Now I've got two that are both going off timer one. Now I'm going to put this this 5,000 uh, on the outside because this is a constant. It's not changing per loop, so I don't really need that. And all, what I'm doing that for is because I want to make sure that both loops, for example, are on the same time schedule. So they're both using the same value. So I want both these loops to go for five seconds. If I, if I want to go for different times, of course, I'd leave that on the inside. I'm going to go ahead and change this display, too, to write on different lines the NXT. And now what happens is this loop will end after five seconds because it's using timer one. This one's also using timer one. Yes, two loops can read the same timer. Two loops can read the same light sensor, things like that also, same rotation. Uh, you can read multiple, you can read the same sensor with multiple loops. That's not a problem. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and deploy this now and run it. Here's the deploy. I'll bring over my NXT and we'll go ahead and run this one. And we'll see they're pretty close. They're not exact, but they're pretty darn close. Um, and it's partly because the refresh rate on, on this on the uh, the remote display is a little bit slow, but also because you're actually doing two independent loops. So you can see they're probably no more than a tenth of a second off at most. At the very most, a tenth of a second. And so because we have a single processor on NXT, it's trying to do two loops. And it can't do them at the same time. So it does this one, does this one, does this one, this one. So of course, the timers aren't being read at exactly the same time. They're a little bit off. But essentially, both loops run for five seconds. Um, and if I wanted to have an independent, for example, I could have used timer one and, and one and timer two and the other, but why use two timers when you don't have to? If I'm I really meant to be timer one and timer two, um, that's fine. And I could actually have different times. So I could have this one going off timer one for five seconds, and I could have this one uh, create a constant. I could have this one going off timer one also for a different time, 10 seconds. So now they're both using timer one because we're not turning timer one off. This one will go for five seconds. This one will go for 10 seconds, even though they're both using the same timer. And the idea is they both started at the same time. This is when we actually started timer one. So there's two loops with uh, different times. Just an example of how to do multiple loops with a single timer.